My name is Laura Penrose. I hope you enjoyed that first half of this video. Obviously you'll know from the title that I was given the honour of attending the John Arbon Open Mill Weekend this weekend and I obviously took my camera along got a little bit of footage for you um I was hoping to film a little bit more of the weekend because it was in Devon my in-laws live in Devon and we went to stay for the weekend um however yesterday I had a truly awful day really bad hay fever slept a lot could barely keep my eyes open you might be able to tell that I'm still suffering a little bit today but I'm like keeping my fingers crossed that I can make it through this video without having to scratch my eyeballs out. <laughs> it's been, it's been a tough June. But I'm here today, it is Monday and I'm going to sit here and talk you through all the lovely Yarny purchases that I made and just give a little lowdown of how the weekend went for me. First I'm just going to draw attention to what I am wearing because I am about to take it off because I am far too hot. <laughs> this is a very very special sweater that I have designed myself using John Arbon Yarn which they ever so kindly sent to me to work with on a design. This is the Appledore DK in the colourway Quench and I'm I'm just I'm just so in love with this sweater and with this yarn. I finished it in time for the weekend though I didn't get to wear it. I just had it kind of tied over my back um because it was just too hot. But I'm really glad I finished it and took it because I got to show it and share it with all the people at John Arbon and it was really really nice. I'm really glad I had it done. But I am going to take it off because I am sweltering. <laughs> you can also there's a lot more information about this in oh gosh, which video? Um, I share it in my latest podcast which I think is episode 27 and you can see some close-ups it's still a whip at that point but I talk much more about the yarn and all that kind of thing in that video so if you'd like more information on this sweater um, head over to that video let's pop it down there for now so let's do a quick talk through so I do need to state that um, John Arbon invited me to the weekend and they paid for my mill tour and for the talk I went to and for my lunch thank you so much that's really 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 kind and um, so it is technically like ad gifted sponsored whatever full transparency I didn't pay to go to this weekend though I 100% would have done and will do again in the future because it was so fun had such a good time the lovely um 
Sophie of the Knit Pill Girl also went, as did Iris from Iris Makes, and I also got to meet the lovely Marina Skewer, which I was really excited about. I've been watching her podcast for a long time, and I've admired her work for a long time, and I actually attended a talk that she was doing with a few other yarn producers, and got to hang out with her a little bit as well, which was so nice. So it was lovely to meet you, Marina. I went for the Saturday, but it was on all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And there's, there were loads of different talks and workshops and stuff over the whole weekend. Um, I just went for the Saturday because we don't live in Devon and it's quite a, a journey to get there and back with the kids and stuff. So I would have loved to have done the drop spindle workshop that I think was on. So hopefully next year I'll arrange it so that I can kind of do one of the classes as well because it looked really, really fun. But it was quite a long class, I think, but I would like to do that next time. And we got there and it was in South Moulton, which is a lovely little town in uh, North Devon, um, right near where my in-laws live, which was handy. Um, and it was in their town hall, which is above the big pannier market. So it's, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, red ceiling, bunting everywhere, so British, so lovely. And there was all the John Arbin yarn, all the tops, and there was also a few other vendors there as well. I can't remember all of them, but there was some the really lovely selection of beautiful things to experience and meet the people who make them and have chats and stuff. Um, so we went through for our talk and it was, like I said, all about bespoke yarns and it was Marina Skewer, uh, Daughter of a Shepherd and Rivenitz, all people that I, whose work I've been interested in for a long time, so it was really, really great to learn a little bit more about them. I did get some Daughter of a Shepherd yarn, which I'll show you in a little while, and I would have got some Rivenitz yarns as well, but they weren't bending, but there was a particular yarn. It was part of a, um, uh, it was, the, I think, I can't remember what it's called, it was something sheer, I think it's like Northampton sheer, something like, it's like, Meant to be like Shire, but it's Shear because it's shearing the sheep. Da, 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 da. And Rivenitz is really close to me actually. Um, and I keep, yeah, Northampton Shear is the range of, one of their ranges of yarn. And within it, there are two different types of yarn. And one of them was a Shetland yarn. And they handed around a sample of a colour work cowl. And I just could, I could not believe that it was a Shetland breed sheep. It was the softest, squishiest, bounciest smoothest most beautiful thing I've ever held and I'm very very much looking forward to buying some of that in the future I'd love to make Penny a full colour work cardigan I've wanted to make her Penny a fair isle cardigan for a while but she's growing so fast that she will only fit in things for a little while whereas when they get older they tend to slow down their rate of growth so hopefully maybe end of this year or next year that will happen but it was wonderful to hear about how all these people make their wonderful yarn i learned that you can tell if a, a sheep has had a stressful year from its fiber you can literally pull out a fiber and see if it's been really wet weather or if there's been a difficult lambing season and that just absolutely blew my mind that the quality of the fleece you get is influenced by the mood of the sheep which makes sense because when we get stressed our hair falls out right so that was a fun little bit of knowledge i gained from the weekend so then after the talk we went over and did the mill tour which was amazing like we got to see how all the different machines worked so fascinating literally starting showing us like the fiber from the sheep and then going through it all right to the end when they've got all these beautiful skeins of yarn and it, it i was quite surprised that it wasn't more complicated now don't take that in the wrong way those machines were insanely comp complicated and obviously it was all kind of brought down to like layman's terms levels but there's maths and there's weight and there's like balance and all it's very very technical but it was really in the end just like machines and fiber and it was amazing I really 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 enjoyed it so it was just nice to be fully sub submersed in the world of yarn for a whole entire day um so yeah and we had lunch at one point which is really really lovely and chatted to some of the other vendors and then I went home that was it and then we had a lovely Sunday well the first half of Sunday was lovely. We had a barbecue, we chilled out, hung out with the kids. And then my hay fever hit and I had a really bad afternoon. So that's kind of how the weekend went. Let's get into the bit you're probably the most interested in and that is what I bought. And I can tell you, I've been waiting for this for a long time 
and I didn't hold back. I recently did quite a big D stash in which I sold quite a lot of yarn and I kind of earmarked that for kind of stash replenishment and I'm really excited by everything that I bought and I had to try really really hard not to cast on some of the yarn like immediately but I was good and I held back so I'll start with the actual John Arben yarn that I bought because I bought quite a lot and we got one of these lovely John Arben tote bags I think I've already got one of these my my uh, mother-in-law got me some John Arben yarn for Christmas and I think it came in one of these. I think I might have two of these now. We got a little pin when we went through the tour that says, I've been through the mill, which just, you know, absolutely made me laugh. And that looks like a Katie Greenbean illustration. Just that font looks like Katie Greenbean. So if it is, uh, how, how good am I at knowing my people? <laughs> anyway, I love that. So... I will start with, let's start with this one. And this is one that I knew I was gonna get. Like, I wasn't sure how much I was gonna get or what I was gonna use it for or which color. But especially for the Mill Weekend, they have produced this um, limited edition yarn called Down the Allotment. And all the colorways are based on the allotment. And this one is called Potato Patch, which just made me laugh. It's like, if you think, oh, what's going to inspire you to, you know, create a yarn colour, you'd think, potatoes? No, probably not. But it's so beautiful. It really is so lovely. It's got that kind of barber pole vibe, but not like full spin cycle where it's really high contrast barber pole, but enough that it's going to give a really lovely mild texture to whatever I make with it. It's mainly brown, but it's got little moments of pink, little moments of orange, purple, green. It's just the more you look at this yarn, the more of it you see. Now the sun's gone in and the, the lighting isn't great in here. So I will do some B-roll for this so I can really do it some justice. But this is 65% Merino, 35% Jacob, DK weight. I don't think I've used anything with a Jacob blend before, so I'm really excited. It's very, very soft. It's quite fuzzy. And I think I'm going to make myself a pair of mittens with these. Just like some world's simplest mittens, really basic kind of mittens. Or, or, I might make a hat. Now, every time I think, oh, I'll make a hat, I talk myself out of making the hat because I traditionally have a very, very sensitive forehead, even to like um, acrylic man-made fibers, even like shop-bought hat. I get very, shop-bought hats, I get very sensitive up here. I've yet to try cashmere, so I might do that, but I just feel like this would make the loveliest, like slouchy, ribbed, beanie hat. I think it's a colour that will go nicely with my hair because it's kind of a similar kind of tone, vibe or am I just being crazy? I don't know but yeah, we will see or I suppose, I've got 100 grams so I'm sure I could make some kind of like neck thing maybe like a, a collar or something because it would be ever so nice on the neck basically this is going to be some form of accessory let me know if you have any ideas I'd like to make something really plain so that the yarn like really really shines nothing pattern just something really simple and just yeah beautiful so that was my first purchase my second purchase was something that I completely surprised myself with and just I was drawn to it instantly no plans to get anything like it but I just thought it was beautiful and this is by Wool Matters Fibre Company, a company I've not heard of before but I need to go and make sure that I'm following and it's made, the base is 50% Blueface, 30% Blueface Leicester, 20% Wensleydale, so lots of lovely breeds that again I'm not so accustomed to but really really want to try. One of the reasons I was so excited about being invited to the John Arban weekend is my goal this year was to learn more about yarn, about fibres, about sheep and kind of lean away from the more commercial yarns. I'm still absolutely fine with commercial yarns. I will still knit with commercial yarns. The sibling sweater that I'm making is commercial yarn. There's like, there's no yarn snobbery here. I'm just really interested and I want to learn more about British yarn, British wool and what is done and made in the country that I live in. And John Arben just in 
embodies that completely. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went off a little bit of a tangent there. So this has got lovely breeds in that I've never used. It's hand dyed with plants in harmony with the earth, which sounds lovely, and the colourway is tulip. And it's just like, it's rhubarb and custard. It's pink and orange, and there's some more yellowy moments. It's the my, my setting my camera's on is definitely not doing the yarn colours the best, but it's making me look less ill. <laughs> um, so again, I'll do cutaways for you. And this is... What have we got? 100 grams? I'm a, it doesn't tell me how what the weight is, but this, this is 100 grams of four ply. So not entirely sure what this is going to be, although I need to do some looking. But if I hold this with like a, a mohair, I might be able to get a Sophie's scarf out of it. Because I think this would make a really fun garter stitch situation. I'm not too sure. I'm not one to really knit with fingering weight yarns unless it's for socks. But I would like to kind of venture into that at some point soon. But yeah, I was just completely drawn to how beautiful it was and grabbed it and was like, yeah, you're, you're coming home with me, even if you just look pretty on my shelf forever. <laughs> the, ne the next one I'm going to show you, I picked up when, just as we were about to leave, I wasn't planning on buying any more yarn, but I was really, really drawn to this colour and I saw it and I was like, oh man. It's amazing, I love it, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> and this is the Exmoor Sock. Full disclosure, I didn't end up buying this. I was talking to Sonia whilst I had it in my hand. And I was actually I was like, I'm just gonna go and pay for this. And she went, no, 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 don't worry. Take it, it's fine. It's just a skein of socks on. So thank you for your lovely gift. And I'm just obsessed with this color. It's like the brightest, it's called Odmadod. No idea what that means. Um, but it's just like the brightest lime chartreuse, almost neon, but not neon because it's got Zwartals in it, I think. Is it, has this one got Zwartals? Yes, it has. That really dark black fibre that kind of doesn't really get dyed and it kind of brings all the John Arbin suck yarns down a little bit. Do you know what? I've got, I've got two other skeins of John Arbin suck yarn. One is in a dark purple and one is in like a, like a... Like a dusty pink kind of colour and I think it could be really really fun. I would really like to make a textured sock with this. I've got 50 grams of it so I think if I did um, contrast heels, cuffs and toes and did a slightly shorter leg should be able to get two pairs of socks out of there. Two pairs? Two socks out of this, one pair. And I thought I might see if I can fiddle about with this design on a sock, maybe just on the front. I have to see if it would work for like different sizes and things. And I've had a couple of ideas, I think it will. But wouldn't it be nice to have like matching socks? Sorry about the light, my gosh. Um, wouldn't it be nice to have matching socks? And I just love how fun and bright this colour is. So yeah, that was another little one. And then my main purchase. I knew I wanted a sweater's quantity, but I was completely like open to the yarn base, the yarn colour. I just wanted to be inspired. And I just kept finding myself being drawn to this one colour. And it's actually the same, the same yarn as this. It's the Appledore DK. And obviously I looked at everything, but I just kept coming back to this colour. One eight nine disconnected. <laughs> I just kept coming back to this colour and I was umming and ahhing, umming and ahhing, is it me, will I wear it, I don't know, and I was just like, do you know what, just going to get it. I was a little bit worried that I was, I've was i been a bit like influenced with this colour because it's not a colour I would normally use at all, but it is very trendy at the moment. <laughs> I picked up a sweater's quantity of the Appledore DK. In the colour, another reason why I wanted this is just so I could say the colourway many times on the podcast and have a little giggle every time, is Golden Knob. Don't demonetise me. There, oh my gosh, look. It's, it's not even doing it justice. It is much brighter in real life. It's kind of giving slight baby poo on camera, but believe me, it's not. It's bright. It's much brighter. It's chartreuse. It's that very popular Instagram colour at the moment, chartreuse, and I'm just obsessed with it. And when I saw this, I just had one, one idea in mind, and that was... Cardigan. 
version <laughs> but like a v-neck version because this is such a bright statement color i'm not sure how i'd feel about it so close to my face would i wear it but in like a deep v-neck situation where it's not all up in your face and you can have like a neutral top underneath that breaks it up between your face and the color i think i'd really really enjoy it and then also i have mentioned this before i think did i i'm not sure if i mentioned this yet i recently found myself being a lot more adventurous in what i wear she says wearing a white t-shirt um, but just generally a lot more comfortable in myself and my body and my clothing choices i'm leaning more towards clothing that i like and further away from clothing that I think, you know, either makes me look thinner or is what would be considered acceptable. Like we're leaving that behind and we're just embracing what we like. And I saw this and I liked it. So that's when I got it. It may or may not be the cardigan accompaniment to this sweater. I can see it being that because I enjoyed knitting that sweater so much. I'm a little bit gutted that it's over. Like I can't quite believe it. I just could have kept going and going and going on it. So I wouldn't be shocked if I go for the cardigan version. But if I have another idea for a sweater or a cardigan in the meantime, maybe that's what I'll use this for. But yes, this is definitely my main purchase and I'm, I'm very excited. And I'm probably gonna hold on to it in stash for a little while before I use it. <laughs> and then I did have one more purchase. I did mention earlier, I bought some yarn from Daughter of a Shepherd. During their talk, they showed, she showed this, um, yarn and I just thought it was really really interesting she was talking about how she started producing yarn and how her father had a flock of Hebridean sheep and how she had they had trouble spinning it because for the John Arbor mill the length of the fibres is too short for a worsted spun but in other mills where they do a woolen spun the length of the fibres is too long and just how a Hebridean is like a tricky one to work with so here it has been blended with um, Exmoor blue face and the Hebridean is the dark colour I think and the Exmoor blue face is the light colour and they've spun it so that it's a marl hence the Hebra zebra which I think is a brilliant name and um, probably one of the main reasons I bought the yarn just because I like saying Hebra zebra almost as much as I like saying golden knob <laughs> when I picked it up I Rachel was on a stand which was so nice to see as well with all the vendors were being all all the stalls were being like um, run by the actual makers themselves and the people making all this lovely yarn and products and art and beautiful stuff and it was just nice to like you know actually meet the people you're buying the things from um, rather than just like clicking online or like in a yarn shop somewhere and I said to her I'm thinking about maybe doing some just comfy socks with these and she was, she was like oh I don't know I was like I don't wear my socks and shoes I don't wear them out of the house I love making socks, but wearing them in shoes just, uh, no, sets me off, no thanks, but I do love to wear them basically as slippers. First thing in the morning, if I'm up early, especially in the winter, or in the evening, sat on the sofa. So my socks don't get a huge amount of wear. And she said, hold it with some mohair for that extra little bit of strength, otherwise it will just like fall apart. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I've got some really beautiful, mohair merino silk yak blend yarn that's left over from another project and it's white so I might hold it with this I don't want to lose the kind of stripey vibe so I might see if maybe there's a, a grey I don't know but I'm probably going to hold some mohair with it and make myself just a really comfy cozy pair of maybe ribbed like just comforting socks and just yeah or the other option is that I do exactly that but I make mittens so I get to wear them a little bit more often and I think that would look this would look very very nice with my camel colored coat I say that every time I want to pair want, want to make a pair of gloves oh it would look lovely with the camel coat and that's why you should have a camel coat because it goes with everything <laughs> So there we are, that's everything I bought at the John Arbon weekend and that's the end of this video, well 20 minutes of yarn chat. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little video, I really enjoyed making it and I had a lovely, lovely time and if you do ever get the opportunity to go to the John Arbon Open Mill weekend, it happens every year, tickets are really affordable, there's loads of lots, lots of different classes and talks and just yarny goodness. So yes, if you get a chance to go next year, please do. 
with that i'll say thank you for watching thank you again john arman for having me and i will see you next time bye, -bye.